Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis. Welcome to episode 56. And this week we're gonna spend all our time apart from one little bit in Lightroom's develop module or camera raw, depending on what you're using. And I wanna show you how we can take this out of camera picture of a swan and very quickly turn it into this final print ready image. All right, so this is the image that we're gonna try and work towards. This is the final one that you can see, but the out of camera shot was this one here. Now, the great thing with this retouching is, again, it's another one from my Devon holiday. That's, that's not the great thing, but the great thing is that we can do probably 90% of the retouching all within Lightroom or camera raw, depending on which one you're using. So before we do any kind of retouching whatsoever, I'm just gonna go down to the bottom here and I wanna create a virtual copy. So I'm gonna right click and choose create virtual copy. Now, the only reason I'm doing that is so that I can show you a before and after when we've quickly run through the retouching steps. So let's now jump over to the uh, develop module and we'll give ourselves a bit more workspace. Let's just bring up the panel over the right hand side here. Now, now just to mention one little thing about this picture here, you'll notice if I just get a adjustment brush, let's just paint around here. Now, what I've actually done, you can see that we've got water above our, um, our swan, below and to either side. And what I mean by that is I've not kind of photographed him at an angle. I've not got low down and photographed uh, across the water so that if you like the, the riverbank in the background there is gonna be cutting across him just here. And you'll see why this is important. It allows us to get that black background so much easier if we kind of photograph it going down at an angle into the water so that we've got water above their head. That probably sounds a bit weird, but you'll kind of see what I mean as we go through it. But the first thing I want to do is actually crop this image down. We don't need to have as much around the swan at the moment. So I'm gonna to go to my crop tool and I'm just gonna drag down the top just to get rid of that uh, distant riverbank there. We can bring up the bottom. I'll hold down my alt or option key and click and bring in the sides just as well, something like that. So I wanna kind of get the swan so that they're in this middle portion of the picture here. And we're gonna increase the, the black around the swan later on, but we'll do that very, very quickly. So that's the kind of uh, crop that we want just for now. And the next thing I think I'll do is just to darken down that background. Now, if you look over in the top right-hand corner here, when I put my cursor inside the actual um, picture area, you'll see we get the R, G, and B values in percentages. And as I drag around you'll see those numbers change or all kinds of numbers like 5.5 3.2 there's all kinds of numbers going on there which indicates to me that this isn't a black background just yet I want those numbers to be pretty much the same but really really low so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an adjustment brush and I'm going to just bring the exposure down just a touch but I'm going to make sure that I'm using auto mask so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint right up close to where the swan is. Now, I'm not too worried about it going over him just a bit, but this is gonna allow me to quickly produce kind of like a, an outline, because I'm gonna darken down the background, but I wanna protect the swan. So you can see Automast does a pretty good job. It goes over some areas, but you know it's no great disaster there. We can just click on Erase, and then I can just come in and paint this kind of overlay off the swan just there, and there's a little bit on his neck as well. We can quickly get rid of that. So something around there is fine. Now that we've got that, I'm gonna go back to pressing A and I can add now to this brush. So let's just increase the brush. I'll turn off auto mask because I don't need to be so careful now because I'm not gonna come quite so close to the swan. And all I'm gonna do is just paint with this adjustment brush now with this red overlay, which is gonna indicate where I wanna make some adjustments first of all, i.e. where I wanna darken it down. So let's just do uh, paint over there and just that last little bit there. So that's pretty much the whole of that background done. So let's just get rid of the overlay. Uh, we can either come down to the bottom here, we've got this show selected mask overlay, or the keyboard shortcut is just pressing O on your keyboard, O for overlay. And all I do now then is just click on the exposure slider and bring that way down way down. Now as I do that, I don't want to go all the way down so it's completely jet black, although you know I'm not necessarily going to print this out so it's not too much of a problem. Let's bring it quite some way down and now when I bring my cursor into the picture, if you look in the top right hand corner now at that histogram where you've got the RGB values, you'll see they're all pretty low. It's 0.1 or 0.2. So it's, it's pretty much a very, very dark background. Now there are some areas where we've got a little bit of the water uh, where we can see the brighter parts on the water and in particular I mean over this kind of 
kind of area over here to the left, which is behind our swan. So to get rid of those kind of areas there, I'm just gonna go to the spot removal tool. We'll choose clone, because it's only gonna be black that it's gonna cover it over with, and I'll just paint a little bit over there and a little bit over there. And there's one just underneath his beak, so let's get rid of that as well. All right, so going back to the adjustment brush, here we've got this little pin, so we can click on that and we can see now the settings that have been affected are only in the area where we've got our red overlay. So that's that pretty much darkened down. All right, so the next thing I want to do is kind of bring out the detail in the swan. We've got our black background. Now let's enhance the detail in the swan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get another adjustment brush. Again, I'm gonna turn on the overlay and we're gonna paint over the swan. Let's just turn the overlay on and paint over the swan. In fact, let's just get rid of that just for a second. And I'm gonna make sure that I've got auto mask ticked because the contrast now between the swan and the background auto mask is going to have no problems keeping within it as you can see just here so let's just paint over our swan like this don't go too far over into his beak something like that so that's really really easy to select now using that auto mask turn off the overlay and then i'm going to bring up the exposure now to really brighten him up but what I don't want to do is blow out the highlights. So up in the histogram, I'm going to come to the far right over here and just click on this kind of like clipping warning here, the highlight clipping. So if I click on that, now if I go too far with this, you'll see it go red, which means I've completely blown out the detail in there. So I want to brighten it up so much, but not so much that that red starts to appear. So that means we've still got detail, somewhere like that. Then I'm going to do the clarity, bring that right up, and that's going to really start to bring out the detail in those feathers. In fact, let's just zoom in just for a second. If I just click and zoom in so you can see this a lot clearer, and I'll go back to that adjustment brush. Now you can see that's without clarity. Hopefully you can see this on your screen. Now with clarity, you can see how much more detail that brings out in those feathers, so I'm really liking that. Okay, so that's the uh, swan brightened up. I can just see a little bit of a, a mark on the back of his body just here. In fact, that looks like a fly. So let's get the spot removal. We'll change that to heel now as opposed to clone. Bring the size down just a little bit and we'll just paint it away like that. Lovely jubbly. So that's gone as well. Okay, zoom out. Okay, now you can see here the body of the swan looks great, but the neck is looking a little bit dirty, not quite so clean and fresh as what the body is. Now, a lot of that's going to be down to the fact that it's that part of him that gets plunged into the murky depths and it's going to get covered in all kinds of muck. So I guess what we could do is we could get another adjustment brush here. Again, we make sure we've got auto mask selected and let's just paint over the neck here to maybe see if we can brighten that up just a little bit. And again, I'm gonna keep that clipping warning on. Let's just turn the overlay off and we can brighten up the neck just a little bit, but we can still see, although we're brightening it up, we've still got this kind of dirtiness on there. And that dirtiness is actually more of like a yellowish kind of tint. So I think we can get rid of that again using an adjustment brush. So on the adjustment brush, I'm gonna click on new and I wanna paint over the area of the neck. Let's make sure we've got that overlay there that looks dirty. And it's mainly in this, this kind of bottom area just here. So once we've selected that area, let's turn off the overlay and then I'm going to come to the temperature slider and I'm going to take out the yellowness in that kind of dirty area by bringing the temperature slider to the left and introducing some blue. So that there makes it go. And I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but that's before and that's after. Just a subtle change, taking it down to around about minus 10 gets rid of that dirt. And there is kind of like some more dirtier kind of specks there if we just zoom in on the underside of his neck and a little bit on his head. And I think we can get rid of those using the spot healing. So we'll click on the spot healing make sure it's set to the healing brush and let's just paint and get rid of that one just there and Lyron does a great job of covering that over let's try on this one just on the base of his neck just around about there see what that does I've gone a little bit too far on that one let's just remove it so it's just paint without going too close to the edge something around about there looks good the area that Lorem's chosen I don't really like, so we can actually click and drag the area that we want to use to cover it over. So I'll put it to around about there so it kind of matches in a lot better. And the last bit, let's just paint a little bit of this dirt off the side of his head, something like that. Yeah, that looks great. That's all done without going into Photoshop. So let's come out of the spot healing brush and zoom back out. So now let's dive over into Photoshop then just to do an extra couple of finishing touches. So we go to the photo menu, choose edit in and open as a smart object in Photoshop so that we've always got access to any of the retouching that we've done and we can make changes later on if we want to.
And then when it opens up in Photoshop, I think the first thing we'll do is just actually create the kind of crop that we want in here. So we want to increase the dark area. So I'm going to add a blank layer and drag it to the bottom of the layer stack. A quicker way of doing that, hold down your command or control key and click on the new layer icon. It puts it directly below the one you've currently got active. Then I'm going to go to my crop tool and I'm going to hold down my alt or option key, click on the far left handle and drag out to increase some width in this actual picture. And I'll do a little bit at the top as well, give him a little bit of space above his head. So now we've got all these transparent areas, I want to fill those in with the same colour that's surrounding our swan. So I'm going to press I on my keyboard to get the eyedropper tool, which is in the toolbar just over here. And I'm going to sample right up to the edge of the picture where we've got the black joining the transparent area. So I'm going to click on that. And when I do, it samples that colour into my foreground area. So now that I've got this uh, transparent layer active, let's just rename this one to canvas because we're going to increase the canvas area. When that one's active, I'm now going to go to edit, fill, and I'm going to choose foreground color. And it's going to fill all those transparent areas in with that foreground color. Now, just so you know, when I actually did this picture for myself, my own portfolio, I did a couple of, uh, I used a couple of plugins to give it a kind of painterly effect. And those plugins are by Topaz. And I won't use them now, but just to show you which ones they are, if we go to the filter menu and Topaz Labs, I used Topaz Clarity to bring out even more detail in those feathers. It works great. It's a little bit of a different effect to what you get within Lightroom and Camera Raw's Clarity Slider. And then the one to give that painterly look is Topaz as clean and it really really does give it that really effective kind of painterly or even a cartoon effect if you push it a little bit further. But that's all we're going to do at this stage. I'm now going to go file and save. That's going to then update the image over in Lightroom. So now we can dive over to Lightroom and we can see the before and after. So let's just bring up the bottom bar here. That's our final image and this was before. And let's just finish off again showing the final image and pressing F to go to full screen. Now, I don't know about you, but it almost seems to me that every single time I go into Lightroom to do some retouching, there seems to be more and more I'm finding that I can do. It, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we used to have to dive over into Photoshop and create layer upon layer upon layer to do corrections and, and maybe a little bit of creative work. But now in Lightroom, there's more we can do all within the one place. And certainly with the additions now of things like the adjustment brushes, the auto masking, the radial filters, the gradient filters, and spot removal, there's more and more we can do that isn't just corrective but also we can be creative and this has all happened in a rel relatively short space of time so certainly over the last kind of like year or so the way that Lightroom's developed I think those of you who use it will agree that the future looks definitely definitely bright for how Lightroom's progressing so I'm quite excited to see how that goes but hey that's just a quick retouch for this week I've got a lot I'm getting on with at the moment with uh, writing the book and also a couple of other little projects as well that you might have seen online but that's all I've got for you you know the drill if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel and also let other people know about it as well. It's the only support I ask from you guys so that we can continue to help this channel to grow. But that's all for this week. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.